No, I don't think it was the snap. I thought it was his mic turning off. No. It was Thanos. I think, okay, I see stuff now, so fucking jump into it. Hey. <laughs> Sup? Solid. Never a dull moment in the junk drawer. Solid. Um, so, as you can see, um, we're running a little bit of a skeleton crew today. Um, it is the Thok and Alder show for Dungeons and Dragons and Junk Drawer. Ding. Um, yep, Josh is running the, the stream for us, but uh, if you remembered from the end of the last episode, we are splitting the party uh, to do two little side missions, which we'll discuss more in a minute. But uh, this is our fun way of being creative while Pat's out of town enjoying a little vacation with his wife. So uh, that means we could talk all the shit we want and do all of the plugs for Tapatio that we want. So <laughs> uh, do some announcements before we get into things. Uh, let's go ahead and start things off. The hostess with the mostess. Uh, Justin, what you got for us, Dice Daddy? Okay. Uh, I'd like to plug what I normally plug, which is uh, Roll20 for being an awesome platform. I recently have been getting on YouTube a lot. Roll20 has commercials now uh, and ads. So it's really, really interesting. Uh, put us on an ad. That'd be really cool. Uh, also, I'd like to shout out David Hemingway, um, Mythic Portal Games, uh, The Usual Suspects. Uh, also, uh, Suavecito for doing a collaboration with Tapatio. There's a Tapatio comb and pomade. I don't use pomade anymore, but your boy can get a lot of miles out of a comb, though. Um, other than that, uh, back to you, Mike. Sweet. And just for those who are interested at home, it's actually a switchblade comb, which makes it even cooler. Um, all right. Well, then we'll go ahead and hand it off to, uh, our art master himself, Carlos. I would not say master at all. All oh, right, master, uh, art <laughs> masturbator. God, whatever. Masturbator. Thank you. <laughs> that's that's more me. Uh, hello. Uh, I want to give a shout out to chocolate chip ice cream. Thank you for <laughs> getting me through tough times. Yeah, these past weeks have been rough, but I love you so much, and you feel so good in my belly. Back to you, Mike. Support that. It's a good thing. All right, so then I uh, guess that brings it to me. So uh, first, in uh, Josh's absence, I think we have to go ahead and make sure that we don't miss a single stream. So on the count of three, give me a, 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 a you-know-what. So one, two, three. Fuck, Fuck you, Donovan. Donovan. And in the absence of Pat, I'd like to thank his lovely wife for letting him uh, not play Make believe with us this week. Um, <laughs> I would also like kidding. to thank his lovely wife for allowing him to go on a vacation for their anniversary. Yeah, I vacation. Know. What's that? Wonderful. It's, it's Let's a just all thank Pat's lovely wife. All right. Shannon, love you. Oh, guys. one year. It's so cute. Congratulations on your anniversary, guys. Yes. All kidding aside. Um, but realistically, my shout outs, um, obviously follow us on Instagram at the junk drawer show um, for content updates. Um, we did some podcast stuff this past week, so make sure you check that out on YouTube. Uh, we put out a podcast recapping our campaign thus far. Uh, there was a podcast that Justin did with his dad about him opening, uh, his own, uh, is dojo the correct term? Yes, it is a dojo. I don't want to be insensitive. I don't understand. It's all okay. No, it's good. Your own, his own dojo, if you will. Thank you, sensei. So, um, bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. And, uh, of course, we had Josh do his annual fireside chat with a bunch of friends and family. Uh, so three hours of rambling and fun and good times and emotional yeah. emotional sentiments. So definitely make sure you go check out The Junk Drawer Show on YouTube to check that out. Uh, shout out to uh, Trinity Medical Center. Um, I'm very happy to say that my mom uh, has recovered from COVID-19 and she's now home resting. Uh, no, no need for a ventilator or anything, but it was a long couple weeks in the hospital. So shout out to the great people there for taking care of her. And uh, unshout out to the IRS. Where's my money? Where's my money? Which one? Just call me yeah. Stimmy Turner because I find it fairly odd. I ain't got my stimulus check yet. I've been loving all of the direct deposit plus fourteen hundred dollar memes. They've been great. I haven't been able to check the status on mine. I keep putting in the wrong information and then getting locked out. <laughs> so well, hope, let's hope your boy have gets a surprise one. for you tomorrow. So because most nice. people have it hitting their accounts tomorrow. 
That's what I've heard. Cool. So, All right. Well, then, with that being said, Dice Daddy, yeah. you want to go ahead and take it away? Yeah, take it away. So last time we were all together uh it was a it was a lot of planning it was planning for the next step in your adventure with the impending uh i don't want to say doom but doom. definitely the impending uh incursion that will be occurring with uh flevlog and enya as we have discussed and as you can see by our two participants we decided to split the party uh both ways with Thor and Loki uh, deciding to go back to Asgard uh, and Alder and Thok going to Falsera with the main mission of finding a mad crazed person's uh, blueprints to possibly get off planet or off plane. So with that, <clears throat> We'll go into it. We're in the compound. Uh, if we remember back in Valoria, we are under the uh, the palace, the castle, if you will, in the war area. There are several different rooms and bunk beds and whatnot. And I, if I remember correctly, Thok, you stayed with Tibran and caught up, wink, wink, innuendo. <laughs> and Alder, you were by yourself. And I'm trying to remember what you were doing specifically. Uh, I was mostly just kind of uh, mentally preparing for uh, the fact that we're going back to an area that I have not been for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, in, you know, obviously uh, haven't seen my folks, not sure that I want to yet, but um, definitely have that on my mind. Okay. So I will say uh, for different reasons, but both of you, Get the benefits of a long rest. However, both restless nights, but once again, for very different reasons. Um, PP's pee kissing. Worth it. Worth <laughs> it. I'll take the exhaustion <laughs> just so I can get the exhaustion. Um, get so, you should have seen the other guy. That's, uh, I am the other guy, apparently. <laughs> so... <laughs> Justin's uh, always the other guy. I'm always the girl or the guy. I'm the boy. <laughs> um, so it's early, fairly early in the morning when you start hearing uh, different clattering and sounds of breakfast being made. Uh, Abigail seems to be, uh, I wouldn't say she's like the house, not maid, but she doesn't like upkeep the house, but she upkeeps the, the lair. The, the house essentially she looks like she can take care of herself however she takes care of others uh as you know she's been uh paying particular attention to valdana her daughter making sure that she is fed basically being a helicopter mom but then again she hasn't seen her daughter in quite some time uh so you both are welcomed to the smell of cooked meats and eggs and toast and coffee as you guys are kind of waking up in your in your beds. So we'll go with uh with Thok first. And Tiburon is out cold. You guys had a very long night and he was very tired. <laughs> so he's like quietly snoring, like to the side, and you're just kind of looking at him, Thok. And it's been so long since you've seen his face outside of uh that one instance in the tub when you were thinking and saw him. Yeah, and uh, just little nuances that you can see, like the different freckles that are upon his face, and he looks very peaceful as you see his chest rise and fall. Yeah, I'm gonna watch him like a creeper for a few minutes. And uh, is there a window in this room? It is underground, so unfortunately, there isn't a window. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get into just casual wear. So whatever mm -hmm. the equivalent of like tank top and PJ pants are and uh, slowly and quietly walk out of the room. I'll have my holy symbol around my neck okay, and try to find somewhere secluded and peaceful where the sunrise can be seen to pray to Pelor. For my okay. morning, it's my morning routine. Nothing special, right? 
So you're you essentially are wearing um, just slacks. There's no undergarment on because you're wearing your pajama bottoms. And then you just put on this very loose fitted kind of uh, dress shirt almost uh, because you came in with your pirate garb. So it's essentially just wearing the the underwear and the the shirt. Yeah, but it's like open. You have your your <laughs> your symbol out and you're just kind of like tiptoeing and you're like, don't want to wake up. And it's just like, ee! and very uh, you're able to go in uh, and out fairly quietly. He's very knocked out. And as you kind of come out waiting by the door, arms crossed with his head to the to the wall is Manu and he looks over at you and without even saying a word, he just starts following you to uh, where you're going to go to pray. Um, I don't say a word either, but I just kind of like look at him and I just smile and wink and keep walking. And you see him and he just double birds you. <laughs> um, oh. What was that? I was going to say, I don't care. Yeah, I know you don't. So the two of you kind of walk and uh, you're able to go through the fireplace. There is that upward stair as um, you and Manu kind of walk. And you can hear outside the crumbling and the destruction outside of the castle. But you're able to go into, there's this very wide garden that you, uh, that is in the palace grounds, different flower beds that have been kept pristine despite the war that's been going on. Thanks to the magical enchantments that have been made onto the covering. Unfortunately, you just don't know how long they'll hold. Um, but the two of you are able to kind of sit. There's this nice little marble bench that, uh, directly looks north as the uh the s- son of pelor first starts to crest as you see behind it the uh the son of lysander so i'll face the son of pelor mm-hmm. and i'll i'll just sit cross leg on the ground just facing in that direction and Again, the last 24 hours have just been a lot. Yeah. So I'm going to be like, okay. I'm hoping that I'm following the path that you think is right. There's no going back. Two gods are going in one direction. Alder and myself are going in the other. Any advice, any sign would be great. But at least if I'm going in the wrong direction, please let me know. I just want to make sure that everyone comes out of this. All right. Now, are you just praying normally or are you doing Yeah, I'm just sp- praying. Okay. I'm just praying normally. Okay. And, um, yeah. yeah. No, that's it. As you do, you start kind of feeling that warmth in your in your chest again and you just hear kind of like a sigh from Manu just <sighs> unamused and okay. mm-hmm. I like open one eye and I look at him I'm like you don't have to be here uh, I'd rather have these kind of thoughts in my head just uh, as opposed to the other thoughts in my head so uh, yeah you're welcome I'm not thanking you. So cool. You're, you're welcome. And I close my eyes again and just absorb the daylight. Okay. And after about like 20 minutes or so, you uh, you feel like a light like uh, peck hit you, almost like uh, being darted at by like a bird pecking. And you kind of open, and there's no bird, but there's like a small stone. And then you see another stone kind of go over uh, and it's going over the wall (laughs) and you see like very tiny hands look up, pull themselves up. And as you see Mo looking over the wall. And I was having such a good morning. I reach down and I grab his arm and pull him up. 
<sighs> you know, I slept on the wall, right? I sleep on the wall. I, Have but you, you kept slept us on the wall before? You kept us very you kept us very safe though. I appreciate that. Very good job. Why did you sleep company. on the wall? Because you didn't invite me inside. I had to sleep outside. I mean, it seems like a very... And he points yeah, over at the, uh, the wyvern. Yeah, but like, he's a very nice wyvern. Like, he tried to kill me twice. But you're still here. That is because I threatened him. We are not on best talking term. I'll, I'll keep that in mind and I'll let Dremel know when he comes back. Ugh. Or Loki. I'm never sure what to call him now. So confusing. And you see Manu and he just kind of shrugs and he goes, I have no idea. I'm sure they'll answer to both. So, so I sleep inside like person now, right? Yes? Yes, Mokrin. You can sleep inside like person Ugh. now. Leafy. And you see him and he <laughs> drops down and he kind of buries his hands in his pockets. He still has his like backpack and all of his stuff, <laughs> but he kind of like follows you as uh, before you go to bed. Matches, please. I one I not go to bed now. Suns are coming up, and like I said, I slept on the wall. Okay. And he pulls out uh, matches from his back pocket and puts it in his hand, in your hand. Is that all? Yes. You sure? Yes. Is he lying? Uh, go ahead and roll an inside check for me. I'll do it on the app. Ooh. Ew. Ew. I'm the app boy. 22. He's lying out of his ass. You know Mulgrim. I'm I'm too much in a good mood to care. So I'm just like, don't blow anything up inside, please. And I'll keep going. Hey, keep them. So, while this fuckery's going on, Alder, uh, with your restless kind of sleep, a lot of things <laughs> on your mind, is there anything in particular in the morning that you guys are doing? Uh, for me, um, I'm just making sure that I have the proper spells prepared. Um, the more that I think about it, mm -hmm. I do want to go talk to Thok before we get ready to go. Um, first thing that I do want to do is uh, I want to give him the hat of disguise that he let me back. Um, okay. And... After the night of restless sleep, I've uh, I've come to the determination that you know, if my family finds me, my family finds me. You know, um, I'm not going to hide from them any longer. Uh, I'm not seeking them out, but there's going to be a confrontation that's going to happen at some point, and if we run into them for with you know the two days that we're there, then that's what happens. Um, and then obviously, uh, hand it back to him. And then while we're eating and getting ready, I just think it's going to be more so of, uh, making sure that we have everything we need prepared from a standpoint of spells. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously I have transport, transport via plants to get us there. I have pass without a trace, um, for areas that we're going to sneak around. There's a lot of different things we'll need. Uh, we're probably going to have to stay at an inn, um, which, I know you've been to probably a good amount of large places, but I'm just going to warn you. You may not have been to a city quite like this. Um, it's fucking huge. Okay? So, there's going to be a lot of things to see. A lot of smells. You know. Uh, <laughs> we might have some time to hit up some shops if there's anything that you're looking for, but just know that two things... Just for warning, um, is that things are going to be a little expensive here, just because it's a very pricey area. And two, it's a very, very predominantly elvish area. So 
I apologize in advance if you get any funny looks, but reminder consistently that I've got your back. Um, I'm not going to take um, any kind of racist bullshit happening. So I mean, I do have a hat of disguise. I gave that back to you, so if you want to use it, by all means, you can. Um, if you think it'll be easier. I mean, I to can... be completely honest, if they see a half-orc in your armor walking around, they're probably, they're going to stare, but they're not going to fuck with you. I know that much. Oh, well, stares I'm used to. Even amongst half-orcs, I'm not exactly one of them either. Like, I'm something in between, so That's I'm right, used yeah. to. I'm used to getting stairs. Like it's totally fine. Okay. Especially if if Tiberan comes along with, and I mean, how many water ganazis do you see? I could tell you right and now Falsera. that he's the first for me. So. But I have to I have to find out whether or not he wants to come. I don't want to force him into a potential dangerous trip. Knowing him, he might want to, but I don't want to make any assumptions. I don't think we're gonna have much danger here, because I mean. For the most part, my goals are we have to get to Dr. Ashford if he's still alive. Um, if not, we have to find his heirs to do some of his research um, to see what we can find out. Because if there's anybody that's going to know how to work this, it's him. Like, yeah. there's, I mean, to give you an idea, the guy built an entire rail system of, like, municipal travel throughout the city you the city is huge but you can if you're at the center hub you can literally get to any one of the boroughs in seconds because of a train system that he built wait how big of a city are we talking about are we talking about like flamingo bay big i.e out of game <laughs> are we talking about new york san francisco orlando like oh this is this is manhattan baby oh shit this is a full-on metropolis. So this is, it, it's enormous. And one thing that I remember about Dr. Ashford, um, you know, something that he always said, so don't take this the wrong way when he says it, because obviously you're a man of faith. Um, he, his motto was always that God's magic is just science I haven't figured out yet. So... He's a very intelligent man, and he thinks that anything that he's seen a god do, his goal is to find a way that he can do it without becoming a god himself. Got it. So he's not anti-religion, it's just he's very crafty with his ways and a, a kind, kind of a, a beautiful mind, if you will. So. All right, I will keep that in mind, not to offend. Um, thankfully, I'm not easily offended god knows i've gods actually because i bounce around between a couple no i'll be fine cool well i mean in that case i mean obviously we just have to make sure that i guess you have your spells prepared to be able to try and still communicate with thok and donna or not thok yes you with donna and dremel um, if we can, because obviously once you banish them there, we can't get them back. Correct. So, and random question for you, totally off subject. Are we still calling them Donner and Dremel or are we going with, like, I'm over here like whispering. <laughs> or are we calling them like Manu's like Thor this. and Loki? Like, I'm so confused. I just, because now they're introducing themselves as like their actual names. So I'm like, is the other one a dead name? Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm so confused. My, <gasps> my, my thought process on, process on it is I met them as Donna and Dremel. I was in prison and traveled for a long time with Donna and Dremel. A lot longer than I've traveled with Thor and Loki. So uh, they're Donna and Dremel to me. I got you. It's still weird that I know people who are gods, but that hasn't really set in yet. So... Yeah. They're Donna. They're Dremel. I've almost beat the shit out of Dremel. I've spawned the best I can with Donna. So even though I'm technically a mortal elf, I know that I could beat the shit out of him at times, so it goes cool with me. 
See, that explains why he beat me. So now I don't feel that bad because he had an unfair advantage. Divine. I'll get him back, though. I'm sure you will. Also, Mokrin is just watching this as he's just eating, and he's like... <laughs> just very loud. Uh, I would say at the table is currently Mokrin, Manu, the two of you. Abigail has come in and out, uh, you know, frequently and occasionally just to check in on you guys. Eventually, she does sit down herself, and uh, she sits on the the far side, but she engages in conversation when she needs to. Um <clears throat> She does seem to uh, kind of light up when you mention Falsera. And she's like, Falsera, I, I went there back when I was much younger. Beautiful city. Gorgeous. Yeah, you could say it's something, that's for sure. I mean, it's the buildings are high. I mean, the people are friendly enough, considering. Uh, no offense, but... None taken, trust me. When you can speak the tongue, it makes things go along sm a lot smoother, as I'm sure you know. But, no, nah, that's a beautiful place. What tongue do they speak? Or is I mean, like... it's, it's predominantly an elvish community. Like, there's there are some, you know, some dwarves here and there. Uh, obviously, uh, Ashford is a uh, hobgoblin, so he uh, stu always stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh, but they but, speak common, uh, too, oh, right? Of course, of course, okay. but... But don't be surprised if someone speaks Elvish behind your back. It's uh, a to think of to put it in perspective, Alder. It's kind of like living in Montreal, where everyone speaks French. They look down on you when you don't speak French, but they can also speak English as well. Yeah, that that's exactly what it is. Good to know. I'm trying to see if I have a spell. I mean, you want to go on and waste your spells on that. I mean, what if you need a quick getaway? No, I know, but if I need to communicate, what if me and Alder get lost or separated? It's not something that I need to prepare now. But I, I mean, what I other can... what other languages do you speak? Well, I speak common, dwarvish, orc, and primordial. Oh, that doesn't help me. Um, right. But I, I think <laughs> I can prepare tongues. How long does that last for? Or comprehend languages. I don't know if I'm a higher level to do it. Uh, What's the uh, the description? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. If it's even a cleric spell, I can't remember. Uh, let's look at it. Comp. Where are you? Elemental PQR. First level. Mm -hmm. Nope. Comprehend <laughs> language is not a cleric spell. What about tongues? This is what happens when you play in three different campaigns. <laughs> I you mean... Don't remember... <laughs> you don't remember which one does what. That's first world problems. Hard times. Tongues, third level. Oh, yeah. Third level. Okay. So tongues is the one that I have. Uh, it lasts for an hour. Okay, so I mean, realistically, we don't um, don't necessarily need that, but it, it, it'll be good to have if it does come around. Um, there is one region, um, just so you know, it's like the gold petal region, also called uh, Zilishent. Um, God bless but you. <laughs> um, it is a good thing. But Zilishint? Yeah, Zilishint. Um, oh. But they also call it something else that is a derogatory term. So if you hear anyone say this phrase in Elvish and I don't catch it, let me know. Uh, it's Intelquis. Intelquis. Okay. So Intelquis. Um. If you hear anyone say that to you, just let me know. Intel Quest. Got it. Intel Quest. I look at Manu, I'm like, are you going to remember that? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Cool. 
And then I just look over at Manu and I say, thank you. Well, I mean, obviously I'm coming to this thing, yeah? I mean, I assume that you'd probably be tagging along. I, I feel like I don't have a choice in it, but... Um, I mean, if you don't come along physically, you'll be there mentally, so... Mm, I'd rather be there. I don't want to be anywhere mentally at the moment. Can and you, he... like... Mm. Oh, sorry. Can you, oh, yeah. like, be here, and then all of a sudden I think of you, and all of a sudden you appear next to me? Like, can you teleport like that? Or do you have to, like, travel like we do now, that you're a little bit more solid? I don't know. Do you want me to go into a different room and you want to try to teleport me over here? Yeah, do it. Go outside. And you see him and he just gets up and he just walks through the wall. <laughs> I'm going to close my eyes and be like, be right here next to me. Now. Just I'm always here clench. next to you, Thok. Oh, that's creepy. I'm always here. Oh, you do, no that? one's next to Thok. <laughs> But he's hearing that in his head. Correct. No, yeah. but like not mentally, just teleport here. Yeah, I'm trying. I don't know how to teleport. Okay, it doesn't work. Come back. Sock, why don't you think really hard and try and get him to teleport? Like no, make a we really, don't... really like strenuous face I while wish, you're thinking about it. I wish with all my heart that Manu and I were not apart. You're doing it, Thok. You're believing. No, it looks like you're, you're taking a shit. It. Yeah. No. No, his face looks dumb, doesn't it? Yeah, Smokerin, a little bit. No, that was uh Oh yeah, you can hear my. <laughs> uh, Mokrin goes. His face looked like he's trying to pass stone. Been there before. Amis. No fun. Okay. Well, it was worth a shot. Figured I'd try. And so, Ma Manu, come back. <laughs> Manu, Manu, come comes. back. Through the the wall, his hands are in his pockets, and he goes, There's "Some weird shit <laughs> in the ground here." Oh God! Yeah, it's not important. Anyway, so I don't think we can teleport unless no. uh, it's a, like a wider distance. I don't know how this tetherment works, and uh, I don't know. I mean, what? Am I haunting you? How is this? Uh, yes. And he just kind of sits down and yes. he's like thinking. Yes, you are. While uh, you kind of do that, <clears throat> at some point coming down the stairway, uh, hammer in hand is uh, your friend Thor kind of coming down. He has this big stupid grin on his face and he's like, oh, hey, guys. Uh, and poof, puts the hammer down on the table. Ah, those eggs. What the <laughs> hell is a hammer? Oh, is that Anya's hammer? Oh god, it's my hammer. She was just borrowing it. Did it? DM, did it look like the way it does now? It does not. So before with the hammer, it looked, uh, it was primarily gold and a very, uh, almost like a platinum, just very bright uh, stonework. And uh, it had a very large axe blade on the side of one end, and then this almost like a mallet on the other side of it. Um, and it was uh, short in length. It's not like a, a two-handed quarterstaff kind of handle, but it is. it was one-handed. And now it looks primarily stone, short, block. Think of the more classic comic book. Thor's hammer. Thor hammer. Mjolnir, yes. Okay. So, how is this going to work? Are you just going to take it with you and... I mean, yeah, I was thinking of... I mean, I have to bring it with me, yeah? Well, yeah, but I mean... Are you going to try to fuse it? Or are you going to try to, like, have... What's his name? Well, you got to remember... Um, from what I remember, the whole reason we're going to see Ashford is to try and get us... The directions to how to get to the moon man to Nidavellir. Nidavellir. That's the mm -hmm. word. to get to the guy on the moon who can make his hammer his hammer again. Um, yeah, I mean but... this is it like 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 a half capacity. Like it's good, and it feels like uh, 
feels like a uh, piece of me that was missing is finally back. But if we can get to uh, Nidavellir and Moradin. Ah, uh, Moradin, that's the name. That's the Moon Man. That's the Moon Man. Oh, yeah. I like yeah, Moon uh, Man better. Uh, I mean, yeah, suit yourself. And Mokrin is like, uh, Moradin is, uh, he is the dwarf god. He is god of forge. You know Moradin. And Thor's like, oh, he owes me like, how much is 900 in birthday gifts? Oh, God. That oh, many. 900. Oh, yeah. 900. Yeah, no. <laughs> and he's just eating. And he goes, so, thought, how is this whole, like, thing going to work? On my end, so mm. I am going to cast banishment on both you and Loki, Dremel, Dremoki. Um, yeah, and welcome, you're welcome. And I just have to concentrate on you guys staying there for a minute and just keep in mind it's a one way trip, uh, it'll send you back to your home plane, so you'll be in Asgard. I don't know where in Asgard, but I'm hoping that you remember your way home once you get there. Uh, I think I'll be all right. Um, so just to clarify, Valdona won't be able to come with this then. Not the way that I'm sending you. Yeah, all right. I don't I think can... she's going to be too happy about that, but that's not your fault, of course. Uh, I'll make sure to tell her. I can pray to Pelor to see if potentially I could. She, he could give me the ability to and do it. Um, I I can. I mean, divine... don't no 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 no. Don't worry about that. I mean, this is a an operation. This is a very tight operation. Uh, if we yep. can get a hold of Helm, I mean, that's going to cut all of our time in half. Yeah. Didn't you promise her to, you would take her to Asgard, though? Yeah, I didn't say when. Oh, she's going to love that. I mean, it's kind of like... I mean, it's going to be more like my problem, and that's... Uh, that's You're like not wrong. A while from now. Oh. Okay. So, when do we leave... Well, Within the hour? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to find ourselves a tree that's not on fire outside of town, or possibly something, unless there's something here in the garden that's going to be big enough for us to use, um, for us to make our way. But we won't be able to get back until tomorrow, guaranteed, because I can only do this spell for us to travel once a day. Um Worst comes to worse, we can try and get some supplies together if you are unable to find your way back. Mm -hmm. I could probably get Thok, Valdana, and myself to Asgard after we get back here. And we'd have to just stay there for a night, and then I could bring us all back. I'm just saying as a possible emergency if you have issues with Helm. Fair enough. So oh, are we going to stay in contact? Uh, I can cast Sending. It does go through different planes of existence. However, keep in mind, there is a slight percentage, if I'm not mistaken, that it won't reach. Um, and... There's a 5% chance that your the message doesn't arrive. But the chances are on our side. Um, and... I can check in on you. A few, every... What do you think? Every 12 hours? Like, I think uh, 12 hours is uh, sufficient. And sure. while you guys are kind of discussing this, Abigail goes, actually, uh, I might have something for that. Um, give me like 10 minutes. And she gets up. Oh, I guess good thing we're not getting ready to leave for about an hour. So do we want to banish the gods? And then me and you go and find what we need to find, find a tree or some bush or 
it has to be a tree, right? Something with no, a trunk thick enough. No, no, it's just um, we're going to be coming out of a tree, hopefully. Um, and uh, it, we don't have to go into a tree. It just has to be a plant big enough that you know we can essentially travel through it. All okay. right. Uh, just a, a heads up, um, just to be on the safe side, because I have been getting watched lately, um, which is weird. Um, I am gonna cast pass without a trace on us before we go, uh, just so that way uh, to hopefully cut down on the possibility of us being seen when we come out the other side. Okay. What do you mean you're being watched? Oh, uh, you weren't here for that conversation. I don't know. Was I? I was kind of preoccupied last night. Yeah. Yeah. No, I heard. Um, uh, we all was... heard. So- sorry. I think you heard more than most, Monu. Um, how was the front row? How was the front row seat, by the way? I don't want to say I was in the splash zone, but sploosh. You were in the splash zone, buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, twice. I-, I brought it up. I think I might have, may have just been speaking with uh, with Donna when I brought it up, but I've been uh, I've been getting scryed on, I believe, because um, hmm. of. You you know uh, has it ever, have you ever been scried on before? I'm sure I have, but not yeah, known it. Well, that's the thing is when you, when it happens, you feel it. Um, you you definitely have the feeling of being watched for a little bit of time while someone's doing it. Um, naturally, every time I get scried on, we're not doing anything cool. Like, okay, of course, they can't watch me while I kill a fire giant. But you know, is there there's a way to see us scrying? person in some way shape right i mean not to my knowledge i I know that i I, i've never scried personally but i know that i if i have the right things i totally can i don't think i have what we need but i can scry but obviously that's not gonna do anything um no i i used to travel with this wizard many years ago um with one of my first parties and he used to be able to see a scrying orb with being able to see invisibility. But I don't have that ability. So we don't know if and when you are being scarred right on. Well, that's part of the reason why I'm giving you the hat of disguise back is, for the most part, I haven't been able to stop it yet whenever they do it. So there's a high likelihood that it's not going to matter too much when we get there. If they decide that they want to see what I'm up to, they're going to see what I'm up to. So, oh. Got it. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, I mean, I don't think that it's negative. I'm honestly just hoping that it's my mother um, since I did send Aya to go see her. That's really yeah. the only other thing that I want to try and do is I want to get Aya back. Uh, That's where town. she went. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to bring Aya back home. Okay. Uh, well, at least home isn't to me. Uh, well, yeah. again, we're not going over to cause trouble. We're there no. on quote unquote diplomatic purposes ish. Eh, so, not so much diplomatic, but we're trying to save the world. We have so. diplomatic immunity. I like the way I you don't think, think that uh, that means what you think it does, but uh, yeah, fuck it. I'm in. Manu, it's diplomatic immunity. Come on. While you guys are speaking, uh, Abigail kind of comes back and she has this kind of box and she goes, now these are old, but uh, they still should have some miles in them. Uh, these belong to uh, this belong to my father and his friends. And uh, she opens and you see four uh, necklaces that look like uh, hydra heads that connect and are biting its own neck. And she goes, with this, uh, I mean, I don't know how far Asgard is, but you should be able to speak without having to send a message. Oh, shit. Okay. That's great. Thank thank you. We'll yeah, make sure that we return them. I don't know if they have any sentimental value. I'm sure they do. Hell, I mean, my dad ain't going to use them. So just uh, use it for now. 
And we'll get to that conversation if we need to. Now, you do need to attune to it. Okay. It is an attunement, but hell, hell of an attunement, yeah? Yeah, yeah hell. I guess we'll get ourselves attuned right now. And by the time we're done, I think should be good to go, right? Yeah, I mean, I just have to get all my shit on. and So maybe we'll leave it an hour and a half. Sounds like a plan. Um, What are we adding to our inventory? Uh, I have to make it. Okay. But um, I'll just clear one of my attunement spots then. Yeah. Just essentially know that. (laughs) Just essentially. You're going to be able to cast sending and message without having to cast sending and message. Very useful tool. Um, So while you do that, uh, Thor is going to go, well, I have to go find Loki and... Uh, I need to tell Veldonna about our new travel plans. So, uh, <laughs> meet back in an hour, yeah? Hour and a half? Hour and a yeah. half, yeah. Get attuned as well. We're gonna need yeah. him. Yeah, right. And you see him and he takes uh, the other two and he fucks off. Uh, so, what are the two of you gonna do for the next hour and a half while you prep? I just get attuned to the necklace and... Mm. Uh, <clears throat> Aside from that, I'm probably just going to try and scope the outside just to see if I think that there's uh, any kind of plant in the garden that I think is going to be sufficient enough um, for me to be able to use the spell. Um, I will say, as you kind of look through, eventually you do find a very large flower bed that is just full of sunflowers. That sun sunflowers that are at least six feet tall? The stalks? Yeah, they're very stall. That'll work. If you anything, you could jump in them, too. <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking, swan dive. Um, but yeah, there there is a flower bed that you can utilize. <clears throat> and then, Thok, anything you're doing in particular? Yeah, I'm going to grab a plate of food and bring it with me back to the room. Okay. And I quietly crinkly open the door you do and immediately his head pops up and he goes food <laughs> yeah, yes food is that there. bacon yeah it's bacon that shit makes the world go round holy shit You're and you welcome. see him and he crosses his legs like he sits indian style as there's room on the bed for you to sit on the corner and he goes so and he notices the the necklace he goes that's new yeah, uh, it was a gift, something to be able to communicate with everyone long distances so that I don't have to uh, burn a slot to be able to speak to the gods that are going to be in another plane of existence. So You don't sound worried at all. No, why would I be? You know, we're splitting a party in half. Two of them are going to a plane that I've never heard of where potentially their brother might or might not be dead. And then two of us are going to some crazy man in a city I've never been to find a way to get to the moon. And we don't even know if that man's alive. So no, I'm I'm not worried. It'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And he, while you're kind of speaking, he looks at you and eventually he gently kisses you as he goes, we're going to be fine. It's going to be okay. We'll, uh, we'll figure out how to get back with them. And if anything, hell, I think we can take on a couple of fire giants, right? Oh, yeah. Or at least Mokran can. Oh, God. Yeah. If anything, yeah. he can get swallowed and then just blow himself up. It's, I wish. <laughs> Please tell me you're coming with. Hey, I, I'll come with if you want me to come with you. Only if you want. You know me. I'm not one to make you do something that you don't want to. Where are we going again? Falsera. Hmm. Apparently it's a very large city. Uh, It's very elf heavy uh, population. So we might... Oh yeah, but let's be real. What port do we land on where we're absolutely loved? We're used to getting I'm charming, so... 
You really are. And he smiles and he goes, humble yeah, too. Humble. Oh God. Yes. Very humble. I learned how to be humble uh, in the time you were away. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I, I can see that patient too, waiting for me on the show. Oh, wait, I waited yeah. long enough. You did. I was the one that got uh, arrested. So it's true. So you haven't taken me on a date in a very long time. So Falsera is going to be a date. It'll be a, like, yeah, exactly. It's a getaway. It's, you know, we have transportation taken care of. Uh, mm-hmm. We leave in an hour and a half. So enjoy mm-hmm. breakfast. Um, yeah. And then we'll grab everything and. She's going to be so happy with me. She is going to be just tickled pink. I know. But, I mean, who else am I going to trust with the ship? She's she's pretty much it. She is. There's, like, things have happened since you've been gone. Uh, She's... I don't want to say she's changed. Well, she's, defi- she's still our girl. But. All I know is at some point. There was a storm. It was going to take over the ship. We were teetering bad. She dove into the water. And after 30 minutes, the storm stopped. Haven't seen her being able to do that before. And she hasn't done it since, but coming out of the water, little things. Something's changed. And she will tell me. Maybe sometime she'll open up. She's always been a reserved one. Well. I mean, you've been closer to her than I have. I mean, this past six months have been really nice, though. We've we've been able to kind of like almost become chummy, <laughs> friendly. I'm glad. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll ask her about it, but it's hopefully she'll be okay on the ship with oh, Mokrin. Yeah. Ooh, I feel more concerned for Mokrin than her. Yeah. So, I don't think I don't think we have to worry about her in that regard. You're not wrong. So, well, usually aren't. And uh, you see him, and he goes back to eating. There's that hum, uh, humble pie I was talking about. Yeah, no. Comes with my stunning personality. Okay, you eat. I'll get ready, and I'll attend to this. Okay. <laughs> so, after about ninety minutes. You and Tibrin get ready, kind of washed up. He is wearing his pirate garb, his coat, boots, has his cutlass to his side. And uh, the two of you kind of walk out. And Alder, are you just out in the garden right now? Or are you going to say goodbye to Loki and Thor? Oh, no, obviously. I I feel like we're all going to be together um, to basically do our send off. Um, So, yeah, absolutely. I'll be I'll be near. Okay. So as the four of you reconvene, Thor has a slightly like flush look on his cheek. Uh, and Loki has is in his, his garb, his arms are crossed and he has like a small smirk on his face. And the four of you are outside of the sunflower garden. So I I tap the necklace and I start thinking, okay, does this work by thought or by speech, but not say anything? Can anyone hear me? Alder, you don't hear him and Thor and Loki look at you, Thok, touching your, your chest with the, the necklace. Nope, doesn't work that way. Can you, can, can you hear me now? I mean, if I'm standing right next to you. Yeah, we're right here, buddy. I like whisper to it. Can you hear me now? Ah! And you hear this like very high, like he's very hot on the mic. Oh, sorry. Let me. I, I spin it to turn the gain down. 
and it just fills your ears, and you're like, okay. So oh, you do... God. Ah, okay. So you those turn work. it up to 11. Shit. Sorry. Well, now we know we work. they work. I guess. But, all right. Last, last chance to turn back now, boys. And y'all ready to go home? Thor Not goes. Slightest. Uh, it's been quite some time since I've been home, so I think I'm ready. And he looks over at Loki and he goes, "You ready, brother?" And Loki goes, "Yeah, I'm ready. Um, just kind of brace yourself." Only word of advice I have. And he kind of like pats Thor on the uh, on the sh- the arm as he recrosses his arms. He looks visibly uncomfortable. <laughs> Okay. I go ahead. Oh shit, I need something that neither of you like. What do you hate? And Loki looks over at Thor and he goes, "Do you mind staying here?" <laughs> and Thor goes, "Ha ha 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 ha." What what do you need? Uh something more like a person? food like food do you not like like anything distasteful anything that you don't like if you hate this ugly flower then sorry alder um hey. we can just i need it as a material component i need something you don't like both of you don't like well you don't like each other i could just grab each other, each of you and <laughs> banish you with each other i mean i mean he's a pain Sec- in the ass but I love them. And Loki's like, oh my god, please don't get mushy on me. Um, something we both hate. Something it's something hate. distasteful. It doesn't have to be Distaste. a hate. Ooh. Um, I got an idea. Uh, uh, Dremel, let him take one of the fire giant teeth. Oh yeah, both of you hate fire giants. Yeah, that's fair. Hmm. And it... It's not going to get consumed, okay. right? No, it won't. I will bring it back. This is you're coming back for this. And he reaches in and he takes out the tooth of Egan and he goes, If this burns up, when I come back, I'm gonna have to go back to a dead giant corpse and get another one. It won't. And I'll make sure that I'll tie it around the rest of the teeth that hang around my neck. And it is fucking massive, dude. But all right, y'all ready? And I'll take or the tooth. Puts his shoulder on and, and ready. Start muttering in Orcish and banish both of them at fifth level. Okay. And you just hear out and they are gone. And I will concentrate for a minute to make sure they stay banished. A minute passes and your new four parties of Tibrin. Manu and the two of you are currently standing now. And then I'm just going to touch the necklace and be like, uh, at least to to Dremel, does it look like Asgard? As you remember it? Uh, and you hear like a moment passes and you hear, yeah, no, it looks exactly like I remember it, but good thing that the fucking necklaces are working. <laughs> just call us if you need anything. Yeah, just uh, just be safe, Alta. You too. Yeah, and Thor, you or Thor, Thok, you also hear this. You hear like it's almost like an echo, because you can you're next to Alder, but you can also hear the enchantment in your ears as well. Okay, so it always calls the four of us instead of anyone Individual. in particular. Correct. Got it. Um, all right. Next stop, Balsera. Okay, um, so it's going to be weird, but we have to be quick and just follow my lead, okay? We'll try. All well, right, and then I'm... You're, you're talking about Pardork, Ganassi, and a, and a ghost. ghost. <laughs> Walk into a bush. <laughs> There's a joke here somewhere. Right? Um, an orc, so... and Ganassi, and an elf walk into a bush. First, I'm going to um, take some ash and 
ash ash from leaf and kind of grind it up in my hands and blow it out on all of us and cast mm -hmm. pass without a trace and okay. um so i'll be like quick discreet because we're going right into my family's garden so just you know try and be as quiet as we can okay we'll do and then i'll be like just follow my lead and then i'm just gonna go ahead and uh as i do that and i'll just go ahead and be like <coughs> and also catch me if you can and i'm just gonna go ahead and tag them and i'm gonna start sprinting towards the the uh sunflower patch and i'm gonna cast transport via plants and i'm going to try and do a full uh like dive directly into them and as i dive you literally just kind of see like a <sighs> void open up and i'm just gone oh i immediately follow yeah because as i said it's got to be quick so and tiburon and manu follow as well and the sensation is uh odd it's different from wind walking where wind walking you could feel your your body rip apart and configure itself back together this is almost like a lurching feeling you feel in your stomach as you literally shift through this area to a completely different and the sounds of chaos and buildings falling and decay and fire are soon greeted with bird chirpings there's like a very soft babbling of a brook as Alter, you're the first to step out and you are in your family's garden. Your fa your grandfather's tree still there, massive. It's uh I would equate it to almost like those um those great big red oaks that you know you need like 10 people to hug around. Is it like, like the, the sequoias? Sequoias, sequoias. Like a sequoia. Mm -hmm. It is just massive and it's the only big tuft of green that you can see for miles because as you look out into the distance that it's been a hundred years you see nothing but silver as you see glass and light reflecting off of all the different buildings as Thok you soon come out of this massive fucking tree into this garden and as I described to Alder it's just farther than your vision can go are just mountains and mountains of architecture and structure of metal and glass and everything is just reflecting light whoa i tried to culture shock you come on let's get out of the garden quick do you live in the fucking future what is this as you guys are kind of walking it's like i haven't been here in a hot minute yeah i'm it's... taking everything in but obviously definitely staying on alder's heels so there are a few kind of like areas in the garden uh alder that you would remember there is a deeper foliage uh area uh that has a couple of like trees it's very heavy and brush uh you do know that there is a pond that you used to frequent uh, when you were much younger there was it was almost like a pond slash fountain and you know that either way could uh, get you out of the uh, the garden. Okay. Good to know. And I'll be like, all right. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick, quick scan to see if I I see Aya at all in the garden, thinking maybe she could be here if she's not at the family's house. Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check while Alder rolls that. Thok, as you're following him, as you get farther away from the sequoia. You do see in the distance that this is just a massive grounds, like acres and acres of land. And on it is this massive house that looks like it is. Of course, it's elven architecture in nature, but it is stone and wood and metal and it is massive. And over it, it looks like there's almost like a glass dome that lays on top of it. This just looks I turned to Tabor and. This is going to be so tempting not to steal from. Don't do it. And he looks and he's like, I mean, we're not going inside, so you don't have to worry about me stealing from your friend, but God, they bougie as fuck. Yeah. Do you think I've... they have sparkling water in the rivers here or what? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, Alter, go ahead and give me your investigation. 
natural one. Ooh, oh no, Bubba! You don't even know what Aya is. No, um, <laughs> you've never even seen a fucking bird before. <laughs> You're like, I knew it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, through kind of like your nerves, your jitters, and literally being back, you're getting like extreme PTSD <laughs> and you're just like, <sighs> <sighs> uh, and unfortunately, as you dart around looking, you do not see Aya anywhere. I'll take the natural one on that rather than on the stealth check. Yeah. I should pee a little bit. Uh, uh-huh. just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a group stealth check. I'll roll for Tibran. Oh, you fucker. Much better. It was almost an 18. It ended up being a 5, so that's a 15. Tibran also got a 15. Because he also got a 5. We're just (laughs) watching, looking at everything, and not paying attention to what we're doing. I rolled a 29. 29. Actually, wait, hold on. No. I rolled... Uh, 37. Oh, 37. You didn't add your modifier. I forgot that... to add my modifier. I just added the plus 10. It's a lot higher. Um, quick question. Which direction are we going towards? Foliage or pond? Um, the direction that would take me further away from the house. I mean, they're both kind of the, the same distance. Oh, is much. it like exact opposites of and then the house in the middle yeah essentially i say go go foliage then so that way we don't have to trek through water okay and let me just see something damn it really quick and eh. so as you're kind of walking through and stealthing through Eventually, you do see um, a figure in the foliage. They they don't take notice of you. Uh, it is humanoid in nature, as you see kind of um, pale skin, almost uh, um, grayish white with just tinges of green in it, green fingertips. And you just see these massive antlers that just kind of grow out of their, their brow. As you see this young... They look elven as they are currently manicuring and looking at the the garden. And uh, Alder, go ahead and roll a just a general intelligence check. Check or a save? Check. Damn. Ah, uh, 19. Okay. You it's don't recognize... <laughs> you do not recognize this person. They look half elven in nature because you do see that the ears slightly slope and they look to be about, if you're going by elven years, about 95. And you could just see minor glimpses like you haven't gotten a good look. You don't know what color their eyes are, but they're very like angular features, very handsome features. And you just kind of hear a humming as bring up. And then you see sprouting off of this foliage of bush. You just see these flowers start to open up and you see them streamline water that kind of comes from the, almost the ground as he pulls it up and it just streaks across his arms and he waters. And then, uh, Uh, do I see um, uh, the, the tune that they were humming? Um, did it sound familiar to me at all? Um, I would say it's it's not something overly familiar. It's okay. it just seems like it's it, there isn't anything with like a melody to it. It's just kind of like humming to himself and then kind of like hum talking slightly but nothing to the extent of like a melody gotcha um do i see any resemblance to myself in any of their features you would have to get closer okay then i avoid that okay all right so 
as you eventually pass through on the outskirts of the foliage, there's almost like a hard stop. It's where your earth and ground and you can feel it beneath your feet is soon just replaced by hard metal as you are in the, uh, what borough district are you in Alder? Uh, we are in the, uh, the fast star district, um, also known as Italian. Um, so I guess Thuck, uh, Tibran, Manu, Welcome to Falsera. And as I've said, it is massive. There are buildings that are almost as high as the mountains that it uh, kind of is wedged between, between. You see that there are these two summits that this town is just in the middle of. And it just, it looks like it's taking influence from the stone, but that stonework eventually turns into that metalwork. And that plating, that harshness from earth to metal, it's almost like the streets are lined with this. The the buildings are lined with this. Any the the rail system that Alder was talking about, you just see it <laughs> kind of zoom by very quickly as you are it is very overwhelming if you're not expecting it, as it is a bustling. Think of it like Tokyo, New York, and uh I don't know. Tokyo and New York had a baby. Dubai, like all just like in just one. Very <laughs> active, very uh, heavy. Lots of elves walking around, and some of them, most of them, don't take notice of you. And then the occasional glance, and then it's not even like a like a blink and like oh man, double take. It's just occasionally you'll be looked at, and then it'll just people will move on. And I'll just kind of like look to everyone and be like, "You good? You good?" Like I tried, like I said, I tried to warn you. Did I I, uh, I, I, I undersold it. Didn't, what I, the fuck I, I was under... that thing? The thing that just, what? That was the, that was the train? Oh yeah. That's, um, uh, the mass transit. Yeah. That is, but there's a name for it, but I, I, I don't recall writing it down. So what, we I, today. <laughs> I have I, it. Go ahead. How does talk? something move that fast? Like, is it magical? Like, is that what they use? Like, because that's the breakwater route. Breakwater route, that's right. Like, I'm just, like, baffled by everything. And by any chance, am I, like, everyone's, like, at this height, and I'm, like, just, like, the one person that's sticking out? Or are there uh, people that are my height around as well? I'm 6'10". 6'10". I, mean, I mean, occasionally. I mean, um, and... I mean Alder is 6'1", yeah, right? Yeah, 6'1". I'm not so, sure. Did you, you're at least, like a neck above a good portion of people. But it's not like five, six and like, no, no you're not like Gandalf in the hobbits. You're okay. <laughs> you're fine. Dude, this is insane and amazing. Well, okay. So before we kind of actually get into everything, so that's the iron point. That's the adamantine summit. Falsera basically is at the the center of the base of both of them. The Glasvin Run is the name of the river that runs through it. And uh, obviously that's you've seen the breakwater route. The reason it's called that is because water essentially breaks up the city into two halves. There's three burrows on each side. Um, and basically the, the breakwater route pretty much gets you where you need to go between, you know, the burrows and the center of the the center of the entire metropolis but this is uh Tipper the Eliaris arm up while you while you're explaining but continue yeah. to explain i just yeah. didn't want i wanted to yeah, discuss no, it. not just a it. moment yeah i'll get to you in a second Tibran. uh but this is the um the Eliaris estate this is where i was born it's a lot more extravagant than it was when i left 100 years ago i'm sure thok you've traveled with me long enough to know that it probably makes sense why I left a little bit based on who you know me to be. Um, but uh, everything's so sterile. Trust me, it, this is even more metal than was here when I left. So in other words, as far as my family goes, business has likely been booming. So, but Tibran, you had a question? 
Yeah. Um, we got to find the guy that made that. The guy that made the breakwater rep? Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't happen to know where he lives, do you? He's pretty much kind of right at the central hub of the city. Um, I remembered that his uh, Ashford had basically kind of a tower um, right right in the middle towards the city center. So it's probably going to be close to the main station for the breakwater route. Okay. So we There's... can either take like a an, an hour, you know, a 45 minute to an hour walk to get there. Or we can get there in like, I don't know, a minute or two if we want to wait for the next train. There are towers everywhere. How can you tell which tower it is? When I get close, I'm sure I'll recognize it. But you see by the mechanical prowess of how that thing works that why this would be the guy who might be able to get us to the moon, right? Yeah, no, I, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, some man built some crazy tube look like thing to send you out of here. I thought that was just an insane concept. But now I'm like, oh, fuck, this might actually be a thing. Um, not that I was doubting you, just... I've never heard of such. A th- I mean, th- hey, I always said he was kind of a crazy guy until you started seeing the things that he was able to do. And well, wasn't so crazy, I guess. Well, I guess crazy guys make crazy cities. And but this is, I'm just, I, I ah. man, I'm just going to just keep looking. I'm just like awestruck by everything. Well, well, I mean, we got to be here for at least a day, so I guess we'll kind of, we'll just walk rather than than take the route. Like souvenirs or something we can take? Is there a Uh, pub? Oh, I mean, uh, yeah. um, I mean, there's quite a few inns and pubs and taverns that we could stay at. Um, I mean, at least a couple. Let's see, there's... uh, the Heavy Stone Pub, the Steel Nugget, the Steel Garden, the Steel Mill Tower, the Educated Mind, the Creepy Water Tavern. No one goes there. Royal Beaver, Deserted Pickaxe, Broken uh, Broken Bachelor, First Shovel Inn, uh, D- uh, Diamond Giant Inn. We got the Scattered Chest Plate, the Silver Ocean, the Brass Skies, the Brass Crocodile, and of course the Ashamed Table. Oh God! Did you make some of those up? No, no, the, those are all real. I don't think we want to go to the Ashamed Table. I think we've got enough shame for everything. How about we work? let's let's walk. Why don't we walk? Yeah, or do no, we walk walking train? No, we'll walk. I think we uh, I think it'll be good for you guys to uh, get your your sightseeing out of your system on the walk to hopefully find Ashford so that way we can uh, Yeah. Get that sorry, I, I I've been to many places in many different planes and this never something like this um just so you know that if you if you're following me and you're traveling with me i can definitely get us around this town faster than you know just kind of traditional travel oh no i'm not going anywhere i feel like if i take two steps sideways i'm gonna lose you no you're quite all right um i'm not gonna do that right now i'd rather us take the actual like you know 45 minute walk to let you guys kind of just see some shit, right? You know, get the awestruck out of the way. And then we'll kind of, you know, from there, if we have to move around, I can show you the ropes and back roads, alleys, get us through here a lot faster. Yeah, uh, sure. So I'm going to drop, uh, once we're off the LERS property, I'm going to drop pass without a trace and mm-hmm. we'll just kind of kind of be a better way okay so as you are all going through the city uh it's more of you know you're in the heart of you're essentially walking to Times square <laughs> you're just seeing different kind of like hustle bustle there are enchanted pictures that move and are selling different kind of advertisements this is a very just commercial uh advanced almost um 
almost like sci-fi. That's the only way I can really describe it as best as I can, which is this is like fantasy sci-fi. It's uh, it's full of, you know, different kind of buildings. There is a specific store for a specific thing. And then there are high end clothing and wares and garbs and jewelry stores and magic shops. And there is just an abundance of product. That's the only thing I can describe as, once again, primarily Elvish. Occasionally, you'll see, uh, you know, a human, maybe a dwarf, but it's just a sea of pointy ears. Alder, what form of currency do y'all use in Fulcera? I'm assuming same as everywhere else in the continent? Same throughout the plane. I mean, okay. you'll find probably a bit more, like platinum here but aside from that i mean copper is probably not going to get you much but electrum silver gold still works okay it's just they definitely have people that are paying in platinum uh, especially if you go to that like that Versace store over there uh, definitely uh quite a few what? platinum for anything what do they sell there um i'm just going to be completely honest dude you couldn't afford it I highly doubt that you're wrong. I know, I know you have a lot more money than I do right now, so um, you might be tied up in a couple of things as well. But um, they also do have like uh, kind of like credit systems, so there's a chance that uh, what the hell's that? Like I a mean. Tab? Essentially, like a lot of places do kind of have like a running tab kind of thing. Okay. Um, so. So we can just say that we'll pay it later and then we can just fuck off. Yeah. Right. I it, mean, it's well, not the first time that we've done it. So No, definitely right. not the last. It's not no. quite like that. It's more so like kind of need to have like verification that you live here in order to be in that. It's not like we can have it being kind of traveling realistically i could probably use it but i'm gonna try and avoid that if i can Great. so in other words if we can afford everything that we need here we're going to do it if we need a financial infusion of some sort do what i have to okay dm i have a question for you sure and with my feature bad reputation as a pirate mm -hmm. since i've never been a falsera or near falsera would my bad reputation not count because no one knows who i am here i'll say it doesn't count because you're a pirate it might count because you're a half orc okay because they racist they low racist everyone's a little bit racist sometimes um okay no problem. I saw that on Broadway. Okay. So in, this place is actually kind of cool. Oh, this place is like amazing. And Manu just has his arms crossed as he's looking around and he's like, this is very like, like I'm not an anxious person, but I'm like, I'm up here right now. Can only imagine how I feel. Yeah. So, Alder, what do, if you don't mind me asking, what exactly does your family do that you said if this city looks like this, that business is booming? And then I'm just going to kind of go up to the nearest building that we went by, and um, I'm just going to kind of inspect the metal and see if I could find, like, any markings on it. Um... Most likely you'll be able to kind of see through the plaques. I wouldn't say there's like markings of it. Like not everything is stamped, but I mean, the buildings do match your, your dagger that you made because it has a very specific look and feel and sound. Gotcha. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, be like, hey, come here, come here. Be like, pull out my dagger and I'm going to be like, hold it right next to the building. Okay. And then I'm gonna, gonna give it a little ting to show that it makes the same exact sound when you hit it. And I'll be like, 
when we were in um, Sun Gulf, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. When we were in Sun Gulf, I found just a little saucer that was Eliaris iron. That's really what my family started out with. Once we found the big iron reserves and started to be able to mine deeper, further, stronger, we have... Turpin, just hold it. <laughs> it's like, I can't. I have to pee. Sorry, guys. Um, You're good. We realistically have been able to mine... Uh, mine basically everything that this entire city is made out of so they're miners yeah yeah my thoughts exactly Tibran. It's, it's terrible they, for the they, environment they, yeah, exactly that's part of that's not what my grandfather was about that's more so what my mother married into and uh it's kind of never sat right with me entirely but I was always the heir to the business, so for that purpose, I uh, was always waiting to take over at some point, but my father had me go in exile for a little bit, find myself a little better, and uh, that time is over now, but here we well, are. Have you ever, I mean, don't get me wrong, like what your family has done here is absolutely incredible and i 100 percent see your side of it as well have you ever considered or thought about a way to incorporate both the natural side of things and all of this amazing metal and architecture like i mean is there any way to like harmoniously intertwine them i've always wanted that i don't know if there's a way that it could be done or can be done but anytime I ever spoke to my father about it, it didn't get very far. So he's very set with the way things are. Well, I guess it would make sense because he's profiting off of the things that the city is able to do. Exactly. So if there's a chance that we could, you know, get him to start doing things differently and I could be involved in some kind of you know, eco initiative that's a lot more environmentally conscious. I'd absolutely love to get involved with the family business again, but if the way that they're going to do things is going to kind of continue to destructure, be, be destruction and deteriorate the resources and level the land to just build more mega stores and supermarkets and skyscrapers, then it's not really what I want to be a part of. That'll be our next goal. Let's stop a god war and then see a hopefully better side of Falsera with your help. Oh. We have bigger, bigger fish to fry at this point. That's what the saying goes, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but at the same time, we can't quit dreaming. What's the point on fighting the big fish if? We don't look towards the ocean on the other side of him. Well, you're not wrong. You're definitely not wrong, Thuck. That's, and I'm sure that Manu will agree with me on this. That might be the most insightful thing I've ever heard you say. Yeah, oh, I'm really insightful. Tried. I'm just not smart. I know that. I mean, <laughs> he he just kind of points and gestures at. Doc said it himself. And I'll I mean, just uh, kind of tap him on the shoulder and be like, all right, well, let's keep this walk and talk going, all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I assume we were. Yeah. But so this this metal, like, it, does it have any special properties or is it just, does it have any magical properties? Is it something that, or is it just like steel or? It's derived from like an iron ore um okay. it's not magical in any way but i will say that it is strong as shit it's built to last um to so, last. It's, it's a <laughs> really compared to adamantine i mean it's the adamantine summit right there right is that what that is 
I said that when we got out of. Uh, yeah, I know. Course. There's a lot. There's a lot <laughs> to take in. He also said there was an iron point. So it, realistically, it could just be iron, and it could be sold off as animate, right? Adamant. Can look at it this way. It's kind of like an alloy <coughs> too. Got it. Gives you the best properties of both. Okay. And Manu's like, holy shit. Okay. So are we going straight to the center or are we stopping? Yeah. There? Do you want to go right to the center of the city or do you, do you want to get, get ourselves checked in at one of the, uh, one of the inns for the night? Well, I would say let's go directly there first, because uh, okay. who knows? He might have, again, someone that has come up with all of these things surely can have somewhere for us to stay for a few hours or at least one or two nights, um, uh, if hopefully that he's still alive. Um, but, Mario you know. kind of leans forward and he's like, that's if he likes us. I mean... Alder, he liked you, right? Here's the All thing. Right? He was maybe about 20, 30 years old when I left, somewhere in there. He's 123 years old. Somewhere around there, probably. So Is he, you know, he, wait, I thought you said he was a hobgoblin. Like I said, I don't know that he's going to be alive or if we're going to speak to his <gasps> descendants. Okay. Well, Worst case, if he's dead, we can just spend a couple hours there, and then we can find somewhere to spend for the night. I'm sure there there has to be, again, you rattled off a list of, like, 50 names. There has to be somewhere nearby where he lives that we can find to stay over for the night, at least. And those are just the ones that are, for the most part, like, five-star. There's a lot more ends that are just not uh, what's quite a as star? classy. Like... Uh, so basically, okay. So it basically, if you have like a Michelin award, it's like you are the top dog, best thing in the world. Five star means you are classy joint. Whenever we stayed anywhere, we're pretty much staying at like one star places where the beds are pretty much made out of hay. Um, yeah, it's comfy. The, you, tr- yeah, what are you going to You're never going to want to leave after you sleep tonight. Well, if you sleep tonight. Is he going to kill us? Right. Uh, I'm telling you that the beds are going to be the comfiest thing you've ever slept on. I look at Tiburon, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> He's going to kill us. I'm not going to kill you. Come oh, on. he heard me. <laughs> um, I, I just said if you sleep tonight, because you two are probably going to be fucking all night again. Well, I mean, <laughs> apparently, if this bed is incredibly comfortable, the minute we'll put our butts on it, we'll be passed out, right? And Mon we'll is like, to... I really hope that's the case. <laughs> really hope pulling through. I, pull I through. make no promises, but you never know. Mm. I'm looking forward to it. So, are we going straight to the hub, or are we going to an inn? Yeah, we'll go straight to the hub. Okay. So, as you get closer and closer to um, the center of the metropolis, eventually there is a building that seems fairly prominent. Uh, in the middle. And Alder, you recognize it as specifically that is where the council is, and that is where major city decisions are made. Off to the outskirts, you do see that there is a building that has uh, Ashford Industries on it, on the outside, uh, and it is just fucking massive. All right. Well, um, so uh, that's that's basically the giant government building right there. So let's probably not hang out there at all, uh, considering, you know, we might still be wanted men. Uh, and when I say might, I mean, we are. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, scurry past that. Uh, there's the tower. See, Ashford Industries. Holy shit. Whoa. He's about as humble as I am. Well, I mean, you see the kind of things that the man creates. Fuck. Shit. Okay. Lead the way. Yeah, let's let's go. And I'll be like, I'm gonna have to use my real name. Here goes nothing. I'll walk in last, by the way. I'm letting so, the other two go in front of me. 
the uh, the doors are automated. You hear a very like as you kind of come in, and you just hear a very Snakes. calm voice. Welcome to Ashford Industries. We hope you enjoy your stay. What was that? Was that also a ghost? It's not a ghost. That's just a automated greeting. Uh, I guess let's go to uh, go to the concierge. Or yeah, there's like a front desk. desk. Yeah. And there is a uh, a young looking elf woman behind there, very dressed very smartly as she is currently working on, you just see piles of different kind of paperwork and she makes eye contact with you. And when she sees you, Alder, she smiles. And when she sees the other two, uh, I wouldn't say like the smile drops, but the smile definitely doesn't reach her eyes anymore. <laughs> and she goes, hello, how can I, uh, how can I assist both of you, all of you today? I was going to say there's three of us. Um, <laughs> there are four of you. There's, there's four of us. Well, I don't know if she could see Manu. Um, I just assume most people can't. Um, oh. Hi. Uh, I was... I haven't been in town for a while. But I was hoping that we could arrange a meeting with Dr. Kendall Ashwood. Oh, dear. Um... That tells me that it's not likely, huh? I mean, uh, it is very unlikely. Uh, one, a schedule with uh, any of the head engineers here is going to take, I mean, they're booked up for months. Uh, Kandar, Mr. Kandar, hasn't been alive for quite some time. How long have you been gone? Well, it's been probably about 100 years. 100 years. You know what? I went on a holiday when I was your age as well. Really enjoyed myself. Saw the world. May I suggest we do have a tour in about 20, 30 minutes. Might be able to assist catching up. That would be nice. I would definitely like that. Um, are any of his, uh, I guess, immediate family still within the organization that... Uh you know, might have access to some of, like, his, his research that he's done over the years. Um, I mean, there is a, a board of directors, but, um, yes, I mean, his, his son, Vovren, is, is quite, uh, quite active in, in the boardroom meetings, uh, head engineer. Once again, would be very hard to get a hold of a meeting with him. He is definitely booked for quite some time. Well, um, Brilliant minds and whatnot. Well, uh, if so you know um alder eliaris would gratefully appreciate if i could have a chance to meet with him at some point your ah makes sense now for the holiday yes very good mr eliaris and does uh is there anything else i might be able to accommodate of course the the, uh, the tour will be on the house, of course. That's quite all right. Thank you. Um, I greatly appreciate that. But uh, just, you know, it, I can't really stress enough how important time is. Um, so if you are able to get that message to Vovren, I would definitely greatly appreciate it. Because um, we unfortunately might be against... A, Bit of a time crunch, so. Bit of a time crunch. Um, I will certainly uh, try. Um, he is currently in a meeting at the of moment. Course. Um, of course. Boardroom meetings, of as you know, depends yeah. on how uh, quickly that uh, that turns out. Trust me, I, I I do recall the way that those boardroom meetings can go. So, yes. um, I definitely understand. But uh, and your name was. Oh, yes. Um, fuck, I didn't get a name. Uh, I was never given a name. I wasn't given a name. I'm, I'm Paul. Um, and she just goes, uh, Nilo. Nilo. Which, um, you know, in Elvish is roughly translated to Night Breeze. Well, Nilo, I, I really greatly appreciate your help. Um, we'll definitely wait for the tour and um, look forward to it. Thank you. Yes. And she puts four like little laminates on like the uh, 
the table and you pick one up. Bach picks one up. Tibram picks one up and Manu just stares at it and then stares at the three of you. I'll grab Manu's and I'm like, his arms uh, are like currently crossed like this. We'll just walk away from the table. As the four of you kind of walk away from the desk. And this place is kind of like, think of it like the first floor of maybe almost like Rockefeller or NBC. Like there's a huge just like gift shop in the in the lobby. Um, there are several different elevators. There are guards around different access points. And there does seem to be like a queue for the tour as well. <laughs> When, real quick, when Nilo had found out who Alder was, her change in demeanor, would I be able to do some form of insight to see if it was a, oh, I've heard of you, welcome back, or, oh, you're that son? Uh, go ahead and I'll have you roll like a perception check for it. Perception? Yeah. 22. 22 from nilo you kind of dictate the tone is like oh yikes okay hey long time no see what's up got it but Not it wasn't like a dislike no there wasn't like a dislike or uh anything overly negative just uh kind of slightly off guard and slightly uncomfortable if that makes sense awkward okay yeah because it's essentially the the reason why I did that, and I have no problem explaining this to you, is that the name carries a lot of weight. So even oh. though I haven't been around for a while, it might help us get some things done. The good thing is that Manu I've been... Manu his hand as well. But yeah, go ahead, Doc. Oh, I was going to say the good thing is that I've traveled many places and I've noticed that certain names do have a lot of weight in certain areas. I just didn't know that yours carried this much i'm sure that you, you're gonna have quite a few more surprises for throughout the trip uh yeah so i have a question is it eliaris or linden my birth name is eliaris so my, what's linden linden was my grandfather's name he's the one who gave me the staff um he's it's his tradition that i was trying to keep up he was my grandfather on my mother's side so it was his surname Correct. Oh, okay. I thought it was like Lyndon Arliaris or like a hyphen. Yeah. Not yeah. quite, no. <laughs> so theoretically, you're like Arliaris hyphen Lyndon. So is your mom's maiden name Lyndon? Yes. Her okay. maiden name is Lyndon. Yeah. Any, I can't remember any brothers or sisters. Uh, that's, that's, that, that's. I remember. That's that's the fun part. Um, I didn't when I left. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, was right. that the guy with the antlers in the garden? That's what I. I wasn't close enough to be able to tell. Oh. I was, I was trying to see. Do we have oh. to go back through there to go? I mean, we have to I, get home some way. Yeah. I oh, thought. Gotta ask, right? Not uh, gonna ask. I was so awestruck by the city, I thought that was potentially like your dad. No, that man was looked to be more of a half elf. God. Keep talking though, give me a second. It's okay. Yeah, his father I would assume doesn't have Atlas. No. Maybe maybe he's half elf and half like deer. They're like deer people, right? I, I mean, I've never ran into any of them. Like, if there are, Tiburon, have you since I've been gone? Like, I mean, uh, Sue's like a fish person, so stranger things have happened. Yeah, and there's bull people. There's, you know, minotaurs exist and tabaxis exist. Like, there's cat people and um, turtle that people. Are... And so I don't see why there wouldn't be deer people. I mean, it's either that or his mom fucked a deer, right? No. She didn't. She didn't fuck a deer. You don't know that. God, I take, walk away for one second to go ahead and I mean, take a look at something. I swear. How did this conversation devolve like this? 
Tieflings have antlers, no, not antlers, but horns. They're like antlers. Yeah. Maybe it's not even like any form of animal. Maybe it's Ooh. just. I mean, half. You're not yes. half, though, right? Yeah. Um, no, I'm not. And you're also talking about my mom. Ooh. So if you can Ooh. please stop. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we weren't we weren't trying to. We, sorry. Oh no! Oh my God, are those novelty pets? Fucking stock? deer, and I'm really I'm just kind of figuring it out right now. <laughs> oh my God, look what they do! They click. Like takes your wrist, and he's like, "Let's go to the to the gift shop thing." You press this button, and it just like comes out the end. Like it just keeps going. It's amazing. Uh, as you separate, so mom's like, "I mean, for the record, I don't think your mom fucked a deer or a devil okay. person." Thank you. Mostly because um, I don't think it's physically possible to like have a baby with a deer. Good point. Um, if you go into the gift shop, though, by all means, do not try and steal anything. I swear to God. Well, God. Oh, are we there? Whatever you guys do. Well, you said you guys were going to walk over there, so. Yeah, Tipper dragged you over to the gift shop. Oh, so we're not there now. It's just you and Manu. Correct. It's just him and Manu. And I'm sorry, you cut out for me, Alter. What was that? No, I was just saying, um, for the love, for the love of gods, gods, what God? I don't know. Whatever you believe in, don't steal anything. There's far too many guards around here, and we have a really important meeting that, that we need to try and get arranged. So just mind your p's and q's. And Tibbins like, no, don't worry, we got this. Fine, I, I just gift shop. They got like shirts. Yeah. Look at that. It's got a logo on it. Why don't you have a logo shirt? We haven't been to the family gift shop yet. Oh my god, there's a family gift shop. Doc. Get away. Go. <laughs> so while Tibrin and Doc are kind of perusing through the gift shop, the gift shop is literally a gift shop. Like there are spiral pieces of like parchment, like Ashford notebooks. But they're like seventeen like dollars essentially. Like they're everything is like expensive, and it's just stupid novelty shit. I would say there's even like a uh, a caricature bobblehead of a hobgoblin that just has <gasps> a black that just says science. I want this. Oh man, I, I want okay. it. Okay, and please, it's like forty dollars. Uh, please also get the giant foam finger that says science is power. <laughs> Oh There's my god. That just says science is power. Science. I feel like Dremel needs these. <laughs> science? No, is just science? just no, but I find a way I, he'll find something to do with them. Yeah, that's true. Should we get like gifts for everyone? Are there keychains? Oh, there <laughs> there are definitely keychains. It's probably also some snow globes. And he's like, they never have Tipper's like they never have my name. <laughs> Just because you, you just like go through, <laughs> they usually spell it with a Y. Ashford. All these, all they say is Ashford. They always spell it with oh. a Y, not an I. I gotta um, ten dollars a keychain. Never mind. No, we're not getting this shit. I mean, it's the novelty, right? Yeah, but it's ten gold for. Yeah, a I don't want to spend chain. ten gold on a keychain. God, fuck it's twenty gold shit. for a notebook. Yeah. Is it odd that we're, by the way, walking around with weapons and armor and shit on us? Like, is everyone else that I look around as the people as we've walked through the city and gotten here, are they, like, I very, mean, like, properly well-dressed? Yeah, like... I mean, everyone is in very, very high-end gear. Uh, occasionally, you'll see someone in, like, work overalls or, like, mining kind of uh, garb, but they don't seem, like taken aback by your your weaponry um so you can assume that they're used to adventures passing through occasionally um however you do see like at the queue there is a weapon like cubby checkout so you may have to get your your stuff kind of like marked yeah got it all right when does this tour start I'll say it. it's going to start in about like five minutes. Is there anything you guys want to talk about before you get into the tour? <laughs> Alder, it's your city. Just, what do I need to know? Like I said, at this point, just don't steal anything. Behavior. Well, yeah, don't steal anything. Be on the best behavior. And let's try and we, we got to get, we kind of got to get moving. So hopefully, hopefully uh, Nilo is able to assist us. Yeah. 
I mean, kind of look over at the uh, the desk, and Nyla has not moved from the desk. She's still in paperwork. Do I need to like remind her? Like, is, is no, she okay? We're we're good for right now. No way. Okay. And then so you want that lollipop? I mean, it the lollipop. Which one? The one that is uh, a hobgoblin head, or it's the one that looks like it's a, a world, but it has the word Ashford across it. That one. The second one. The Ashford one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I was gonna say. You I mean, one of each. I mean, I I would love to have some head. You, you can you can suck on Ashford's head, and I'll just suck on the. Wait. Yep. Nope. We're gonna stop the conversation right there. Tour starting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you see the tour guide, and uh, you do have to check your weapons out. So the um, huh. cutlass, light dawnbringer. You all kind of like. I just start unloading like uh, what is it? Uh, Miss Swan and pirates, where it's just. Yeah. One knife, axe, eclipse, just... You're also like that. Like, Tibrin is also like that. So the two of you are just sitting. And it's a good, like, 40 seconds of just, like, taking out weapons and putting it into the cubby. (laughs) And then eventually, like, Manu and uh, Alder, you two are just kind of standing there. And Manu's just, like, staring, almost, like, dumbfounded. Like, why would you bring this much shit? I, we, <clears throat> we need to find a bag of holding. Anyways. Yeah, we'll get there when we get there. Uh, yeah, check everything in. Got it. Uh, okay, so you go on the tour. The tour is, uh, you're kind of ushered in with other uh, non elf folk occasionally you'll have elf folk and there's a lot of like oohs and ahs the presentation kind of breaks down the uh history of ashford and starting from humble beginnings in a log cabin in the jade abyss was dr ashford as he went and he got seven phd like it just breaks everything down uh you found that um they kind of gloss over a few things. They talk about his uh, construction of the monorail system. They talk about his passing and the uh, toolage of going over to his son. And then the passing of that gentleman to uh, his newly appointed son, who is uh, the gentleman that we spoke of earlier. Sorry, I don't have my doc in front of me. Every time we go from room to room, you just hear, it's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's a small round. Uh, there is like a mini like bullet train that kind of goes through just to like almost like a toy train just to show like the ingenuity and at one point there is like a tram sequence where you guys all get carted into like a little thing that just goes do and it's like the uh, Epcot you're like in the land of the Tomorrow. people mover <laughs> yeah and you just see like war forges going like Bring me Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> um, hey, you have Pyra's in Pulse Era. Yeah, right. Uh, and there is like a, I would say like the the guide does give the opportunity to ask questions. So as you're kind of going through, if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask this elf, uh, which they, um, their name is... <laughs> Not important right now. All right, not important right now. Yeah, quick. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, do you do you have any questions while we're we're muscling through? No, I'd love to be like, uh, where where is the uh, you know where where is a lot of the research being done right now? Uh, let's see here. Their name is uh, Wake Amos, by the way. W a k e a m a s. They are male. Um, and very soft, friendly voice goes. 
Well, uh, most of the research is being done in the lab, which is uh, on quarters, of course, uh, on grounds. We have several levels, as you could most likely see upon entering. We have 22 different levels here, all of different researches. And then, of course, at the top is the main meeting conference. Lots of big wigs there. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to go through today as there isn't a board meeting going, but we may be able to pass through the other uh, labs that may be open for the tour. Thank you. Of course. And over here, and then going in and... Manu kind of has his like arms crossed and he leans over to you, Alder, and he goes, We're totally like ditching this toll to go to the boardroom, right? I mean, does the Tin Man have a sheet metal cock? I don't know. I've never met him. Probably. Yeah. It's fair. And he leans back <laughs> as you're on the little monorail. When he leans back, I'm going to lean forward to Manu. I'm like, You can go through wall still, right? Last I checked. So theoretically, even places that are quote unquote off limits, you can potentially check out. Oh, not off limits for me. And I can do that invisible thing. Uh-huh. Just have a thigh. Keep it in the back of your head. Not lean back. And, and then that... I'll kind of lean back to him and I'll just be like, did I just overhear Thok say something really smart? Yeah, he's like two for two today. Don't talk okay. about a no-header. Then it's going to end. I lean back to, to Tibber and I'm like, Tibber, my head hurts. <laughs> and Tibber goes, yeah, I thought I smelled paper burning. So as you guys are kind of going in, do you want to formulate a plan of getting away from everything? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so are we like... <laughs> We established that we're like sitting in a straight line. <laughs> but you're you're currently in like a monorail, so it is like a straight line. It's just a cart. It's a cart of like two, two. Oh, okay. And so I'm me and Manu are like, next to each other. Like and me and yeah, got it. There's at least like twenty people on this tour, not including the four of you. So it's a fairly good crowd. Okay. So in other words, something that we could. Try and slink away from if we find an opening. Is that like a bathroom? Well, There's got to be like a toilet here, right? I mean, this place has fucking everything else. Damn it, they took my sword. Are you going to go to the bathroom on the sword? No, I can cast darkness with eclipse. Or I can just okay, let's... But a distraction. See, see what I talked about with the no-hitter? If we cast darkness, disappear, and then mysteriously the four of us are gone isn't got that gonna raise suspicion yeah what's probably going to be better is if i cast pass without a trace and then we sneak off away from the group so that way it just seems like nothing ever happened and he points over at alder yeah yeah i guess i guess his his idea is better okay I stole so yeah as you guys get off, eventually you will get off the monorail, and as you do, you do have an opportunity to cast uh, Pass Without a Trace again. Uh, yep. So, as you do, uh, I need you all to make a group stealth check. Oh, fuck. All right, what'd you get, Alder? I rolled a 29. 29. What did you get, Thok? A natural 12. two for a 12. <laughs> you got 12. I have to check on Timberin because I just want to know what his modifier is real quick. I have a plus zero. And theoretically, I'm at a disadvantage, but I'm wearing my boots of Elven Kind, so I'm at advantage. So I'm... You're just bad at... Straight roll. Rolling. Yeah. I rolled a five first, and I rolled a two second. Uh... So, oh, I forgot his stealth is, like, good. He has a plus six. Uh, he, he is able to stealth four. So plus 16 for him instead. That's, uh, yeah, 16 plus he rolled a natural 17, so we got a 30 oh. 30 with you. So you guys rolled high. Timber, where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> Babe? What? <laughs> Whoa. Babe, wait. And Manu just <laughs> turns clear. 
So there are two ways to get to the 22nd floor. That is either via the elevator, which you need a badge to go through, or the stairs that you need a badge to access and then a badge to get into the room. Ask me in a 